Hello, my name's Tom and we're back talking about F1 Fantasy. We've just had a pretty incredible race around Singapore and we're going straight into Japan so there's no time to even think about anything. Well, look, slow down, slow down. I'm very excited. So overexcited. I'm still excited from the end of that race. The Singapore like finale, final 15, 20 laps were just really, really genuinely exciting sport to watch for me. I was absolutely on the edge of my seat. My heart was pumping. I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to expect. Were the Mercedes going to catch up? Were they going to overtake? Was there going to be a collision? Was my driver, like my, you know, my team going to get through and score the most points? Were the Mercedes going to come and take it all? And oh, yeah. And that's just from a fantasy perspective. The actual race itself from a reality perspective, just in terms of actual real life racing was really, really exciting. So I'm still buzzing from that. But there's not a lot of time to process it because we're straight into team selection for Japan. But I will do my best over the next minute or two just to quickly summarise what happened for me personally in, in Singapore. If you're interested in that, then go ahead and skip ahead to team selection. I'll put the chapters in the video. But anyway, um, quick uh, brief, like I say, for Singapore for me. I did, for the first time this season, go away from the Red Bull Constructor. First time and probably the last time because hint, hint, uh, spoiler alert for team selection, I'm probably going back to Red Bull this weekend. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do think that it was a good choice. Well, with uh, hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, but I kind of went with my gut on this that the Red Bulls, you know, track specific wise, were not going to be well suited to Singapore. There was a lot of chit chat coming from the Red Bull camp that they weren't looking forward to it very much. Um, but they still did all right, to be honest. You know, Verstappen still scored 25 points. And I think Red Bulls are only sort of 15, 16 points off Ferrari as a constructor. But when things are so tight this season, I'm really glad I took that plunge and got rewarded with those extra Ferrari points. So well done to everyone else who also did that. And if you didn't do that, then, you know, you're not that far behind because the Red Bulls, like I say, still scored well. And you're probably quite well set up, probably better set up going into Japan than what I am. Because I'm going to have to make a couple of changes, most likely. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with that and also used, used the autopilot as well. Uh, two, two chips in two weeks and on non-sprint weekend, non weekend. So it's not something I had sort of planned earlier on in the season. I was always sort of intending to use these chips around the sprint weekend and they may still prove fruitful for those that are holding on to them. Um, but I'm still very happy that, you know, the, the one weekend that I kind of gone against Max Verstappen with, you know, with the autopilot, it's actually paid off with Carlos Sainz pulling through uh, another great performance for him. And he is becoming a bit more of a popular pick now and, and a strong alternative to Perez in those sort of template uh, triple Red Bull lineup teams. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my team from last week. I will have a quick look on our lovely, lovely jubbly website, which is F1 Fantasy Tools, if you haven't already checked it out. Um, I'd imagine most of my subscribers by now, if you're watching me, you're probably quite engaged with the game as it is. So most of you probably have found this website, but I do think it's a really good website. And I want to say thank you to the guys behind it because you've done a great job. It looks really clean and it's it's great for great for looking at your team, and just sort of evaluating what's going on. So I've just brought up one particular page from the website which when I put my budget of 123 million from last week in gives you all the like the optimal teams that I could have had. So the fact that only, you know, the difference was Hamilton and Gasly versus my Verstappen and Alonso from here. Um, that's that's the difference, basically. So if I'd gone for Hamilton and Gasly instead of Verstappen and Alonso, then I would have scored an extra sort of 30 odd points, which would have been really nice. But it's still quite um, sort of validating I guess and quite nice to look back at your optimal team and think yeah um, the optimal team was pretty close to what I picked so I'm pretty happy about that and then if it's if, it, if the optimal team is not pretty close to what you picked it gives you a chance to kind of reflect on your decision making and think about you know why you know if I went back to pre-deadline um, would I have done anything different and that's a good way of um, improving as a fantasy manager and I arc back to Brazil last year in fact when uh, when Mercedes had that one two you know George Russell with this one and only uh, race victory um, Grand Prix victory um, and I think back to Brazil last year when the Mercedes looked strong um, around you know in the through the practice sessions and I just didn't back them I stuck with the the old template of like signs uh, Leclerc and Perez or whatever the template was last year and didn't didn't go forward with it, and yeah, I've learned from that, and I thought no, this is an this is an opportunity in in Singapore to break away from that template, break away from the Red Bulls, go with Ferrari, trust your gut, and got rewarded. Not saying that's going to happen every time, but I'm pretty happy on this occasion it has. So anyway, let's skip ahead to um, team selection. I will say one more thing whilst I'm just faffing around trying to get onto team selection is um, George Russell owners. Uh, make this your safe space because I just want to say I put a big virtual arm around all George Russell owners because that is seriously painful. Uh, I've been there. I've been there when, you know, when you've got your driver um, who's doing well, um, 
the only sort of close, well, I guess the closest thing I can think of what happened to me was when I was at Silverstone a couple of years, like actually at the race and uh, had the, the triple, the turbo boost or mega drive or as it was known then, the triple DRS basically on Max Verstappen on, on that, you know, when they went around Cops Corner and Verstappen went off into the barrier. You know, you had that sinking feeling as a fantasy manager when you see your driver do that. However, I do feel that it's potentially potentially sort of on par or maybe even worse on the very last lap seeing your driver, you know, from a few laps ago thinking the Mercedes are going to hunt down and get that victory and George Russell is going to get you like 40, 50 fancy points to, what, what did he end up with? I can't remember, like single digits or even negative. I can't remember exactly. But either way, I do want to say a big commiserations to George Russell owners. I am sorry. But yeah, because I, I almost picked him myself. So yeah, um, got away from there. Dodged a bullet. Need a little bit of luck in this game. So anyway, as you can see, my team's on screen. Used up all the budget. What are we going to do for Japan? Well, my initial thinking is kind of reverting back to the safety of the template. And I honestly don't think that there's much more to say about it. Uh, for me personally, Ferrari, although they've been really good over the last couple of races, I think that Suzuka should suit uh, Red Bulls again once more. And we should see Max Verstappen back on the podium probably back uh, back on the the top step of the podium so it makes a lot of sense to bring back the red balls and the you know the full guy in my team has got to be fernando alonso as the aston martins just continue in that horrible downwards trajectory lance stroll is just having a miserable miserable time of it at the moment a horrendous crash in singapore which is lucky to get away with relatively unscathed although he was not well enough to partake in, in the grand prix the following day but even so Stroll's on a downwards trajectory. Aston Martin on a whole seems to be on a downwards trajectory. Even Alonso, as a phenomenal driver, that, phenomenal driver that he is, doesn't seem to be quite pulling the Aston Martin through towards the podium that we have seen earlier on in the season. So, yeah, for my two free substitutions, it seems pretty clear that the Red Bull is going to come in. That leaves me with 8 million, um, which sort of leaves me with kind of the pick of the budget drivers. So I can't quite get to Albon unless I had an extra sort of 1.3 million. So I think the most obvious guy has got to be Guan Yu Zhou just because he's very... He's he's been she's proven that he's been very adept as that budget driver option, pretty consistent. He's had a couple of off races, but which budget driver hasn't? And in terms of consistency, in terms of the overtakes, which is where the budget drivers get most of their points, um, and I do think that Guan Yu Zhou is kind of the pick of the pick of the bunch at the moment. Although I will say, um, Yuki Tsunoda, although he's had a terrible, terrible couple of weeks in both reality and fantasy. Um, he's only dropped a tiny little bit of money. Like the, the price drops are really not hurting at all if you get DNF, which I guess is kind of a, a silver lining when you're a guy DNF, so you're not going to lose too much value at least. Um, but yeah, I do think Yuki Tsunoda is definitely someone to think about. I can't believe all of a sudden we're back to budget bingo. It's back to template and budget bingo, but there we go. Um, yeah, I do think Tsunoda is still on my radar as well if he's looking good in the practice sessions, potentially. Or alternatively, if he's not looking good in the practice sessions, then, you know, because I think some people were rewarded picking Guan Yu Zhou uh, in Singapore when he, you know, because he didn't look great in the practice session. So you anticipate he's going to start further back and then can move forward and get his usual overtakes. Um, bit of an overtake uh, guru. Uh, guru is Guan Yu Zhou. So, yeah, Sonoda's still on, the, still on the radar, as is Liam Lawson, for sure. Liam Lawson, who there's a lot of chit-chat all online about whether he should or shouldn't get a 2024 like full-time seat uh news coming up today it looks like he's likely to continue on to guitar now so it looks like ricardo's you know delayed a little bit more coming back so that's quite good for liam lawson owners because obviously we've seen when ricardo comes back i would imagine the way it's gone so far this season is we're gonna have to spend one of those transfers bringing ricardo back in or swapping lawson out for someone else um because we've seen it with like uh, de Vries when he got booted off the team everyone had to make a, a transfer into ricardo um, so yeah, I do think that the fact that he's likely to stay for at least a couple of races means Liam Lawson's um, uh, percentage picked should increase, and I do think he's proven to be a really excellent, um, excellent addition to the grid. And I'd, I'd be really happy to see him continue for the rest of the season. To be honest, no disrespect to Ricardo. Put him in, put him in, I don't know, Red Bull or something. <laughs> get rid of Checo. Um, but in, speaking of Checo, actually, he is someone that I can also get into my team. However. Um, I do think that it would cost me either a minus four or, dare I say it, the wild card just for that one transfer. And that is something I'm considering. If the Red Bulls do genuinely look like they're like fully back on top, then to get back to this full template um, seems quite sensible. But the only way I can do that, because I went with the Ferrari Constructor last week, because I got a downgrade Fernando Alonso, the only way I can do that is either a minus four 
or the wild card. And I am, if, if this is the team I want to go for, then I'll go for it. And then I've just got to decide if, if minus four is worth it or if I just use a wild card. I've already thought over recent weeks that I'm just never going to use the wild card. And I can honestly say with some amount of confidence, although you never know, I would say with some amount of confidence that Red Bull and McLaren as a constructor are probably not going anywhere for the rest of the season. Uh, potentially for like one race, maybe when like Mercedes look exceptionally strong, you know, like Mexico, Brazil, whichever track's going to suit them. Um, then potentially I could look at moving uh, Red Bull out for Mercedes, but I think it's very unlikely. I think Red Bull and McLaren are going to stick with me for the season, most likely. Never say never. Uh, and similarly, Verstappen, Norris, Piastri, I just can't really see them going anywhere either because McLaren's look so strong. They've just had another upgrade. Piastri's also getting an upgrade in Suzuka. So yeah, I do. I feel like if I just revert back to this, use my wild card to save myself four points, because um, I don't really foresee having to use that wild card down the line. So for me personally, and for others out there that are in the same sort of situation, maybe have backed the Ferraris maybe even more heavily than me. Uh, some people maybe even tripling up on the Ferraris in Singapore um, to get back to the Red Bulls. Then by all means, use the wild card. I would say. Um, if the Red Bulls look strong but that's not to count out the Ferraris because I never thought they were going to be that strong around Singapore and then the practice sessions came along and they're just like P1, 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 uh, uh, pole position, won the race. It's like okay, did not expect that but what I do expect going to Suzuka is that these two teams, McLarens and Red Bulls are now kind of new, the new one and two if you like because I do think the Suzuka itself is going to really suit the McLaren those high speed corners. Um, the McLaren just looks kind of good around every track at the moment and in particular um, I think it's going to excel around Suzuka so I'm very very happy to have those nice kind of cheap assets that's it Lando Norris is up to 15.7 he's been climbing steadily um, so yeah I do think that for me like I said I'm kind of leaning towards this but Carlos Sainz is also on my mind different budget drivers are on my mind but I will say almost certainly that this is going to be my team plus you know one of Perez signs maybe George Russell because he's in that sort of price um, sort of price category as well, um, but more likely Perez or signs I would say. But we'll see what the Mercedes can bring to Suzuka, um, and then budget driver of choice. And like I say, possibly Guan Yu Zhou is the favourite at the moment, but we'll see what happens in the practice session. So, yeah, this is kind of my team um, looking looking forward kind of locking in that template but whilst I can still afford it because you never know what might happen with the price changes I might get locked out of being able to afford this triple up on both these strong teams so that's kind of where I'm leaning at the moment I don't really see much other option I mean I could potentially leave the Ferraris in but I just I just don't think that's going to happen I think you know the one week punt in Singapore was enough and then we're going to go back to the warm embrace of the Red Bulls and just you know that safe safe place so yeah, I'll be back again on Friday because the practice sessions are happening basically in the middle of the night in UK time. So I'm going to wake up on Friday. I'm not working. Woohoo. So I can, you know, um, hopefully get a re video recorded after FP2 on Friday for you guys for my sort of more final thoughts um, going into this exciting weekend in Suzuka because it is an exciting weekend. It's another cool track. Lots of drivers like love this track lots of lots of them coming out saying this is my favorite track blah 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 so yeah it's going to be an exciting weekend again um so yeah let me know as always what you think what you're thinking what happened to you in singapore was it great was it good was it mediocre was it terrible did you own george russell did you also have mercedes as a constructor should i bring out the old violin for you <laughs> i'm sorry um but yeah let me know in the comments what you're thinking about singapore what you're thinking about um japan and don't forget, if you're not already um, subscribed, then go for that. Click on subscribe, give me a like, and I'll see you on Friday, one hopes. So yeah, ciao for now.